All right. Uh, well, hey, we'll hop into our sermon today. Uh, we are in uh, the book of James this morning. You know, I'm, I've kind of been, uh, as we head towards uh, into March, thinking about things that I've, I've learned over the last 10 years, important lessons that I've learned. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think I've learned is that, uh, how to put this, you ever have, uh, the other day, so right now I'm, I'm student teaching over at Branson. And the other day I was in a class, and this kid, they've got this computer program uh, that they're doing all this stuff on, and he asks, he raises his hand and needs help. And so I go over, and I don't have any idea how to do this computer program, but I thought, well, I'll come over and just, I'll fake it for a minute and see if I can get away with it, you know? And I say, well, what are you trying to click there? What are you trying to do? And the kid looks at me for about three seconds and goes, excuse me, it's going to have someone else. Uh, uh, and I, what, I wanted to take my shoe off and hit him with it, but... I didn't do that. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's funny having that happen. And I wonder how often do we do that to people? How often do, uh, does somebody show up in our life and they need to tell us a story or they need to talk to us or they need to, uh, they need to just say something and, and, we, and we're in a rush or we're in a hurry or we don't have time? Uh, basically, to sum up what I want to talk about this morning, I think one of the most valuable lessons I've learned in 10 years is that you can always learn something from someone, right? And the second you decide that this person is somebody you can learn something from, but this person is not, is the second you're in trouble. And the verse that, that jumped out to me as I thought about that was from James chapter 1, verse 12. And it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. It's, a, it's an interesting verse because I don't think a lot of us would agree with it right off the hand, Right? Uh, temptation doesn't feel like a blessing. Another word for temptation is trial. I don't think we ever experience trials and, and call them blessings. But the Bible says to us, blessed is the man who endures temptation. Uh, and that word endures means persists, lasts. You know, if you, if you asked me to run a, a half marathon, maybe even a, I don't know if they have an eighth marathon. If you asked me to run an eighth of a marathon, I would not endure that race, Right? Uh, and the question is, if we face temptations and trials, do we endure through them? It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation. I, how many of us, if we were being honest, we would say, I don't know if it's blessed is the man who endures temptation. Maybe more it's blessed is the man who doesn't have to go through temptation, right? None of us are really looking for temptation. None of us are really looking for trial in life. We'd say, blessed is the man who doesn't have to experience temptation. Blessed is the man who doesn't have to go through temptation. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I've met a handful of people in, in life, and this, is, this goes against exactly what I'm saying, but sometimes you meet people who have had it a little easy, right? And, and what do you notice about those people sometimes? A, a tidbit obnoxious, right, sometimes? Uh, or they don't quite have perspective. Right? I think that's something this verse is getting at, that when you pass through temptation, when you pass through trial, when you pass through a difficult time, it's a blessing because it, it forms you. It shows you what's important in life. It shows you what's not important in life. It shows you who you need to be listening to, who you don't need to be listening to. Right? Blessed is the man who endures temptation. I'd ask you right now in your own life, are you experiencing temptation? Are you experiencing trial, difficulty? Is it a blessing? Maybe you can think back on just the last year of your life. What were the things that happened in the last year that rocked your world, that broke things apart, that, uh, that caused strife? Um, was God in it? You know? Are you blessed for it? Are you enduring? Did you endure? Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will see, receive the crown of life the Lord has promised to those who love him. So that's the second part of that verse. It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation... And, 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 and how is he blessed? For he will receive the crown of life the Lord has promised to those who love him. Just a few minutes ago, we sang that song, uh, Mansion Over the Hilltop. I've got a mansion, you know. And uh, th th that's what this verse is saying. It's not blessed is the man who has the mansion in Taney County. It's not blessed is the man who has uh, the, the thousand head of cattle. Not blessed is the man who has the worldly possessions. Blessed is the man who's got a mansion over a hilltop in that land that God's prepared for us. 
a land that endures, a land where moth and thief can't steal, a land where the government can't tax, right? A land where, uh, where we're free. We're free from all these troubles. Uh, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. The Lord has promised to those who love him. And then it, uh, it goes on farther to say, is it going to go again, Derek? Or... Yep, there we go. Uh, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Have you learned this lesson? What is, if you're a, if you're a, I'm sure we all have trouble. I want to say if you're a man, this is something we all have to learn, but I've met some of you ladies too. Uh, uh, but it says, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Have you ever thought of about yourself that way? Swift to hear. What, what does that look like, swift to hear? Swift, yeah, good job, Evelyn, yeah. <laughs> uh, swift to hear, it means that when you're in a place, you are eager and you're quick to hear. You're eager and you're quick to learn. Are you still eager to learn? When you sit down with a friend, are you eager to learn? When you sit down with an enemy, are you eager to learn? When you, when you sit down in church, when you sit down at a family gathering, are you swift to hear? Um, or is it the opposite? Could somebody accuse you of not hearing at all? Of being caught up in yourself, of being busy, of being uh, unable to, to, to hear the things that are going on and, and missing out on, on, the, on the things that are being said? James calls on us to be swift to hear. Uh, swift to hear and slow. Uh, let every man be swift to hear, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. It says slow to wrath. Uh, you know, sometimes I think, again, I, I always wonder if people are like me. I kind of grew up in a King Kong family where we'd, you know, kind of, hey, you're going to listen to me. You know, and, and sometimes I feel like my, one of my biggest problems is being quick to wrath, being quick to angry. Or I get this a little bit from my dad. My dad's idea was you let him know that you're serious right off the bat, you know. Like if you can scare him in the first 10 seconds, there's going to be a lot less nonsense going on. Uh, and now that I'm an adult and I'm also a pastor, sometimes I think to myself, boy, uh, that person who messed up my McDonald's order was just trying to do their job. Maybe I didn't need to be so angry to wrath, right? Quick to wrath. Uh, he calls it to be swift to hear and slow to wrath. You know one of the reasons, if you think about why are you quick to wrath, I think a lot of it has to do with pride. Right? In that, in that, if you think about what's the thing that really sets me off, underneath that isn't it probably pride? That you say, I'm not going to get treated this way, or I'm not going to get this, or I'm not going to get that. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to show them that I'm going to get mine. Right? Uh, you know, the other day, uh, this student teaching has been pretty interesting, and you see all kinds of kids from all kinds of parts of uh, of Taney County. Uh, so I was in a thing, and they were teaching us about how to deal with difficult kids, right? And unfortunately, they didn't say anything about, like, locking them away or anything like that, you know? Uh, they said the opposite. They said, if you've got a difficult kid in your classroom, here's the advice they said. Uh, they said, don't send them to the principal's office, because the principal's office is going to get full of uh, kids, and they don't want to do that, you know? Uh, so here's what, here's what they said. They said, two in ten is what they wanted us to do. Uh, that means, they said, ten times a week, Talk to that kid for two minutes about something that doesn't have anything to do with school. They said, boy, if, and they said, if you'll do that, if you'll talk to that kid for two minutes, ten times, you'll find that your relationship with that kid will improve and they'll behave better in class. Now, whether or not any of that's true, I don't know. But uh, I look at this and I think, isn't that true? Something else they said, other thing they said, the number one reason why a teacher gets angry at a kid is, is over a lack of respect. And then they said, and you ought to just get over it. Uh, and I thought, well, that's kind of the truth, isn't it? I ought to just get over it. Can we apply that to our own life? Are there people that are driving you crazy in life right now? And you, you can maybe tend to just shut up and listen to them for a little bit, right? Maybe if you did that, maybe, maybe if you listened to them, you'd build a relationship with them, right? Rather than, than trying to get them right all the time. Uh, or you may be upset about a lack of respect or a lack of, uh, of something like that. When, when we've got Jesus who died on a cross and He's asked us to do the same, uh, there's no room in, in following Jesus 
for a puffed up chest, right? If you want to puff up your chest and, and say, I've, I've got, I'm going to do this and yada, 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 uh, you got to follow somebody else. Because Jesus went to the cross for people and He's going to ask you uh, to do the same. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. This morning, I want to ask you to apply this into your own life. I want us to just sit and think about it for a minute. Who are the people in your life that you've not been swift to hear? Maybe they've been asking you to hear them. Maybe they've been trying to get your attention. Who are the people that we need to be swift to hear? Who are those that we need to be slow about our wrath with? Probably everybody. Uh, but I want to I just take a moment of prayer here, uh, just, just silently, and, and let's go to God in prayer and seek Him out and say, God, I'm, I'm praying that You would help me to be uh, swift to hear and slow to wrath and maybe search out the places in life that God would call you to do that.